On today's episode, I'm joined by Sarah Taylor, Research and Evaluation Manager at Prison Radio Association. National Prison Radio is a groundbreaking service that operates as the world's first national radio station designed specifically for prisoners. Launched in 2007, it broadcasts 24 hours a day across prisons in England and Wales, offering educational content, music and support to over 80,000 people currently incarcerated. It plays a vital role in rehabilitation by inspiring positive change through storytelling, advice and empowerment. Hi Sarah, how are you? Hi. Yeah, good, thanks. How are you doing? That was I'm a good I'm intro. good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about um, Prison Radio Association and your role. Yeah, so we've kind of got different areas of what um, Prison Radio Association do. So we've got um, radio stations mm -hmm. based in Brixton Prison and then one in Style Prison, which is a women's prison near Manchester. And we train um, prisoners in those two prisons in presenting and producing radio. And that radio is then broadcast to prisons across England and Wales, 24-7, um, as you said. Um, and, the sh it's, and that's called National Prison Radio. Um, and it's loads of different shows. So we've got like different music shows. Those are different genres. We've got shows where prisoners can call in on a free phone line and request songs and um, for other people. That's in their room, a phone line that's in their so room. So normally it's on the wing, a mm -hmm. phone, um, and they can then call the radio station mm -hmm. for free. And then we do, um, we've got, inter we do talk shows, interviews with people. We have, um, we do, oh, I'm trying to remember. We do, um, we've got, like, we'll do programs on, like, specific topics. There might be one on, like, gambling addiction mm -hmm. or specifically aimed at people who have been in the armed forces. Um, and how many prisoners work at Prison Radio Association? Um, people who are currently in yeah. prison. So in Brixton, the capacity is about six. Okay. Um, and about four in style. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully growing in style at the moment. So wow. that's exciting. Um, so... But then we also don't just do National Prison Radio. We also then have podcasts on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we have um, loads of podcasts. Mm -hmm. But our flagship one is Life After Prison. Mm -hmm. I love that show. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> so that's like um, presented by two people, um, Zach and Jules, who were in prison themselves. And it kind of started as something to do with um like to, um so you have so national prison radio you can only listen to on the inside so this was kind of a continuation so that when you get out of prison there's another program we can give people so it's providing support that we also do interviews on there um but it's actually become a bit more than that and it's now like offering support for loved ones and we've got people like mm -hmm. people inside and um, people who work in the system and a mixture and then we also do a talent development program which is working with people so we've worked with people on the inside they get out and then we help continue um, working with them on the outside help them cv jobs um and we have a specific like trainee scheme that they can apply for mm -hmm. they've worked with us on the outside uh on the inside too. So there's quite lots of like different parts of it. And what's your role? Oh yes, no. <laughs> my role is um, so I so my role is looking at the impact the radio has. So I travel around the country to different prisons um, and do surveys on the wings, in education, in workshops, chat to sort of basically as many prisoners as possible to find out what shows they've heard, the impact it's had on them, that sort of thing. And then I also look at the impact it has on the workers that work for the radio, um, how during their time with us, what they've learned and how that's... Benefiting, um, them. benefiting them. Exactly. Yeah. And what, what have you learned since starting to work with, for Prison Radio Association and also from travelling all around the country and visiting prisons all around the country? What have I learned about like prisons mm -hmm. or... I think, like, 
before so I hadn't had any sort of like knowledge really at all of the criminal justice system before mm -hmm. starting this job um so I think and I think it's something that if you have if you're not in it you and haven't experienced anything you don't it's like you don't really know about it right because mm. it's quite out of sight out of mind mm. almost although it has been obviously in the press quite a lot more recently but so I think to be honest I didn't really mm. know anything and I think um I think one of the things I think I think you you think of prison I guess before as this place that oh it's this like violent mm -hmm full of bad people type thing mm -hmm. and I, I know I never thought it was like full of bad people like it's always it's for prisons full of people who have made mistakes and mm -hmm. done bad things right it's not and I'd always thought that but I think there the violence does exist but mm -hmm. actually the thing that I whenever I go on visits that always gets me is like the vulnerability like people will fully like share so much with me and it's like the self-harm the lack of support loneliness loneliness exactly um which is I get a lot to do with lack of funding staff that sort of thing that just causes like mm -hmm. more and more time in your cells and that sort of thing um but, but then also the positives that I would say I've really learned is um the creativity in prison mm -hmm. is just incredible like going around prisons it's like the artwork that people have done and the um like pe people show me poems that they've written which is amazing and like we've got a show that um it's it's called free flow mm -hmm. and it's sponsored by shannon trust who like help people learn to read and write and we it's presented by lady unchained mm -hmm. who is um so she was she was in prison herself and she now presents this show and basically what it is is they play like a beat mm -hmm. or like a sort of underlying tune and then pe they play that twice and then people call in and like spit bars rap down wow. the phone <laughs> yeah um to that song that they've heard they've heard that beat like twice mm -hmm. and then they do it and it's all about and she'll give a word that that week your um word is this so you've got a talk like speak around that word and it's got to all be clean it's got to not like glamorize violence mm. so it kind of is that creativity and i think the way people use um use their words is just to explain things that happen to them and everything it's just unbelievable and i think that is one massive thing that i've just been like wow that people can do this like i come from a massive background so it's not like i've seen a lot of creativity but, but. <laughs> there's creativity in there <laughs> but yeah no that is yeah i always always am like oh my god this is incredible. and is that show just for people in the in prison mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. wow yeah, yeah. yeah so majority of shows apart mm -hmm. from one are all just but you can only listen to it in prison and have you felt that people feel a sense of community through the radio so there's obviously loneliness it's a huge problem in prisons but do you feel like the radio station and the service that it provides helps people feel connected to something yeah I, I think so I think like I haven't been in prison I can't talk like I don't want to sort of mm -hmm. answer on behalf of yeah. people who have but from when I talk to people and go around and do my surveys um I think it's well there's there's two sides to the loneliness right there's the feeling physically alone mm -hmm. which hearing radio keeps you company yeah. um th that side of things but then there's also the feeling alone in the sense that you're the only one going through something mm -hmm. and I think we try and do a lot on there of people are very open with their experiences both the presenters and also um guests that come on who maybe have they've been in prison but now they've done this um thing with amazing thing in their life or or even nothing amazing but just mm -hmm. you know and I think it just uh, from what I've heard people say it makes them realize they aren't the only one going through that and other people so many people are going through exactly what they've gone through and people have said that's encouraged them to ask for help um 
because they're like, oh, okay, yeah, other people have done this. Um, so I think it's those two sides. Mm. Yes, definitely. And I think like with um, after um, Life After Prison, the podcast, it's also inspiring, isn't it? Because it's two people who have been through the criminal justice system exactly. and they get people on who've had such different experiences post-prison. I remember listening to such an interesting episode um, the man who was in care Ian Thomas Ian Thomas and it was just such an amazing and inspiring episode and he was so self-aware and he'd learned so much mm -hmm. and he was so eloquent in how he explained all of the things that he went through and everything that had also led up to him even getting into prison because I think there's so much about like why people could end up in a situation exactly. like that and and, I, and a lot of it is like life circumstances that lead to a situation where that becomes something that happens but it's not like immediately I, I don't know if I'm explaining myself no, that well yeah, but it's yeah. kind of like this huge situation of life circumstances that can lead to like more difficult starts in life that can eventually potentially end up in the criminal justice system and he was just spoke so eloquently about that I just it's very mm. inspiring I completely agree I think that episode is mm. yeah amazing and I think like what you were saying then it's all those experiences that have then led him to that place and him explaining it. I think there's there's a lot of people in prison who have been through the care system. Yeah. And I think, and we, we actually also have recently done a programme specifically aimed at those who have been in the care system. A radio programme? Yeah, on National uh, Prison Radio. What, what was it called? It was called We Care. Okay. And um, I think it's highlighting that there are lots of people who ha are in care, who have been in care and have therefore gone th quite often maybe gone through similar things you're not alone there is this community of people mm. um why did you do a program specifically for people who've been in the care system was it because there was a higher proportion of people who were um in prison who had been through the care system yeah there's yeah. just a lot yeah a lot of people so mm -hmm. it's a, it's a I think with a lot of our um, talk shows we do, we um, they're normally aimed at targeting different groups, groups of people. Mm -hmm. And so um, you do research to find out who would benefit most from... Yeah, and then you know. we'll get... Um, normally we get... So our, we're a charity, because mm -hmm. the radio is a charity. So and we'll get funding to, like, do... So to do a specific mm -hmm. programme as well. So it might be, like... We'll do one about money that stamp on there will mm -hmm. fund you know like so it's partly that as well mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah no it's, I think it's interesting and it's like even if people have if people have gone through similar circumstances then yeah like you said they feel more connected they feel less alone but then there's also people who can show them that there's also a way out of that and that's really inspiring exactly, yeah that's always the thing people say to me when I go on these visits about so life after prison mm -hmm. is especially I find it in like young offender institutes mm -hmm. um they always say how the thing they love about because so you can listen to that podcast inside as well okay. as outside yeah okay they always say when they listen is people say how just it shows them their life's not over. Yeah. So hearing these stories of people that have been in the same situation mm -hmm. they have, and then life, they can do these things. Mm -hmm. And I think especially when there's a lot of like younger people who have been given these really long sentences and they're like, oh, right, well, that's my life now. But it shows that that isn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that has resoundingly been one of the main amazing bits of feedback we've had. On and I saw one of the statistics that um, you shared on LinkedIn was around like the way oh, I can't remember what percentage it was, but how it's had a positive impact on wanting to change behavior or. Yes. Do you remember that? I actually have got good. <laughs> I love the data. And that okay. Yeah. So then I did, let's get I into did the bring, data. I did bring some stats. Okay. Yay. I I remember them all. <laughs> so the one you're talking about is I think this one. Mm -hmm. So, or was it directly? T yeah. So of the like, so life after prison listeners, mm -hmm. eighty six percent said that listening to life after prison made them feel motivated to make positive changes mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Which is okay. Give me some more stats. Some more stats. <laughs> <laughs> I 
actually what i might so we are obviously just asking mm -hmm. about like what people the benefit the radio and the podcast have on people mm -hmm. like feeling alone and community and that sort of thing and on here i've also just put a few quotes okay so i might just tell you some of those because i'm i'm speaking from what i've seen but i yeah. feel like it should come from yeah the people who it actually impacts um so someone said it cre creates a community we can know there's people like us across the prison estate and NPRs helped me to realize that I'm not the only person going through my current situation I feel less alone knowing that others understand how I feel especially with my mental health needs so thank you to NPR for helping me to realize I'm not totally isolated from the world and keep up the good work mm. so I think that's the sort of thing. Um, but yeah, stats. You wanted stats. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some more stats. Um, so we've got 65% said that NPRs help them to understand other people better. 82% mm -hmm. um, said listening to NPRs help them feel more motivated to make positive changes in their life while they're in prison. What's your favourite show that you do? Show. Oh, um, well, we've got a breakfast show called okay. Porridge. Okay. <laughs> which, so um, Ali um, was a prisoner in Brixton mm -hmm. and he is now a full time member of staff outside. And he is incredible. And no one, the most positive person I've <laughs> ever met. <laughs> And he literally just, he, this breakfast show he does every single day and it's, there's request, song requests, he plays music, there's quizzes, he does motivational quotes, he goes through a park and does like a walk with Ali. And Is he the host? He's, he's the host, he oh, presents it and produces it. Okay, wow. And he has his little freight, he says, um, whether you're eating your breakfast or brushing your teeth, stay tuned to the porridge show. <laughs> and he's got his, and it's just, I go around prisons and people are like, they quote Ali to me and Aww. he's just like, I, c I can just imagine being like wanting to, you know, he gets you out of bed. Mm. <laughs> um, so that's probably my show, my favourite show. But um, And it, what about shows? So you said that not all the shows are you can listen to mm -hmm. on the outside. A lot of them are only listened to in prisons. Yeah. Um, but before you were talking about a show that maybe people on the outside and on the inside could listen to. Could yeah. you tell me about that? Yeah, so we've got, um, so it's called the Family and Friends Request mm -hmm. Show. And so every other part of Master Prison Radio is specifically, you can only hear in your cell mm. in prison. But that one um, is um, you, on a link on our website, can be listened to, and on a Thursday. And um, what people can do is, Family and friends on the outside can send a voice note or a song or a message in and dedicate like dedicate a song to their loved one in prison and likewise can go the other way so people in prison can ring mm -hmm. up and say I want to dedicate this song to that to this person on the outside and it's that way of like connecting um, people and I think what someone said to me before is how like sometimes it's really difficult to like you don't feel up to calling someone necessarily um but this is a way of still feeling connected by listening to the same song that might mean something to you without necessarily having to make mm. the phone call and i think music like brings people together right like yeah. nothing else does um, because quite often songs mean things to different people and if you have a shared memory with that music as well um, and just people someone's got engaged by that before really yeah. what someone in prison with someone on the outside um I don't know Whoa. whether it was inside maybe cut that bit out actually okay no that's fine <laughs> <laughs> you haven't named any names <laughs> that's a cute story um um oh now i lost my train of thought um oh that's lovely yeah so would you say that it also helps then connect people with the outside world yeah completely yeah and i think there's 
sometimes people can't necessarily go on come on a visit because really far away work money etc various reasons obviously and um so just anything that enables people to form keep that connection with loved ones i think is mm -hmm. do you know why it was set up I no, I don't actually. Mm. I I guess for exactly exactly yeah. this reason, right? Yeah, is like keeping those connections, and, and because that, it's so important, right? Mm. Keeping those connections on the outside is what gets you through. And if you've got, when you get out, I say it will get you through. There's a lot to it. I don't want to <laughs> say that yeah. that's definitely the only thing that does, and not everyone does have that. But um, it's one of like one of the things that can I guess help get you through. And when you get out having that support system still there is mm. obviously really important. Um, so I think anything that helps connect with family and friends mm -hmm. is got to be beneficial, right? Yeah. And inspirational educational content as well that people can learn from. And it, it's interesting that you say that prison was, is also a very, very creative place because mm. creativity also helps in healing and in going through incredibly difficult um situations yeah. and circumstances it's like how you can you know release emotion stress so yeah that's and some people some great um i mean steel bangles talks about his time in prison um the, and that's what then made him want to make more music when he well, came on the outside so i think so many people like mm. that is where they they find that they yeah really creative or they start writing and suddenly oh they've managed they now have written a book or yeah. they now like taught themselves to play the guitar or um and it, it can be i guess mm. it is yeah as you say mm. you've got you explore Time. that sort of thing <laughs> um no for sure i understand that you don't want to be talking on behalf of yeah. prisoners but what you're saying is from your experience yeah. of visiting and interviewing prisoners all around the country like it's a very unique yeah perspective that you have because they are disconnected as well from each other so um you have this overview of kind that of is different people's experience exactly. yeah that's very true and overall would you say that it's overwhelmingly positive that yeah, yeah. completely um so it's something um 88 percent of people that um i've surveyed say they listen to national mm -hmm. prison radio wow and People say like it's an integral part of the prison system. They it gives them things they can't get elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like obviously the odd person's like, nah, it's not <laughs> like. But no, it's um, yeah, o overwhelmingly. People mm. say we don't. People say it saved them. People say it mm -hmm. gives them that friend that they. Mm -hmm. didn't have and or listening to the radio is like coming home you know all of these lovely mm -hmm. things that people say are um it's, it's so positive because also okay so some people will just listen to the music shows mm -hmm. and but then that is great because it keeps you company it lifts your mood mm -hmm. music's um, the fastest way exactly. to change your mood you if you yeah. weren't having this like nice music you yeah it lifts your mood as you say um but then there's other people that would take things from the more educational shows mm. or we do yoga, meditation, mm. or an audio book. Mm -hmm. We signpost services. So you might hear about a service and then want to, go, and then could go and ask for support because you didn't know that existed. I think there's so much different content on mm. there for so many different types of people that like... Is it the only service that runs... Like, us, no. do TV channels also run or podcasts or... Yeah, so there is, so mm -hmm. there's different, so there are other, like, TV channels. Yeah. Um, and some prisons might do their own mm -hmm. kind of podcast type things. Mm -hmm. um, but ours is, like, I think the biggest. Yeah, and the world's first. It's the interesting. world's first. Yeah, so we, that's the other sort of strand of what we do is um, we've got Prison Radio International, mm -hmm. which is... Um, got sort of a network of radio projects coming together across the world um, to support each other, sharing best practice, sharing um, 
like basically guidance to each other on how best to have a radio project mm -hmm. um, and because I think we're kind of leading it ish because we were the first and we're quite established um so yeah that is another of the many wow. many, <laughs> strands. <laughs> many strands of the PRA mm -hmm. and I also saw life after prison podcast has won loads of awards so it's been really successful because it's yeah. only launched like a year or two ago yeah it's right. only yes yeah, so it's probably yes yeah, I think two yeah it's two mm. years old and yet we've had some like over like 11 million views across wow platforms and yeah we've so Zach and Jules won like best new presenter mm -hmm. um and I think what other we've like they've been nominated for lots of things I can't I can't remember I should, <laughs> I should okay. know but but also the PR, PRA have won loads of awards mm -hmm. um the Prison Radio Association mm -hmm. we've We've won Best Production Company of the Year before. Mm. We've won a uh, last year actually. We won um, the Free Flow show I was talking mm -hmm. about, where um, where people ring in and spit their bars down the phone. That won Best Specialist Music Show oh. um, last year, and these are um, big award shows. Mm. This is like the the Arias, which is sort of like the Oscars of radio. Mm. Like these aren't and and when you say that. Prisoners will work for the radio, and then sometimes after they come out, they will continue to work for that. For yes, so you've got certain people who've yes. done that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so we've got um, so Ali, who I mm -hmm. mentioned, as well. he yeah, he has now been employed by us for I think like three or four years, maybe since because leaving. That's obviously another big problem with leaving prison the difficulty that it is to then readjust to yeah life employment all of that yeah I actually again brought some quotes okay yeah okay. of course um, so um your job's in statistics my job <laughs> is and I just don't I want to talk from the people at yeah Max, as opposed okay. to from me yeah um so yeah you so um so I've got a quote from Ali okay um and then also there is We've other uh, we've got this trainee scheme I mentioned mm -hmm. as well. Um, that is, um, yeah. So when people more like a couple of months after people mm -hmm. get out of prison, they can then apply to be on the scheme, and then um, we continue training them. And I've also someone who's currently on that. Scheme. Okay. I've got a quote yeah. So Ali said. Um, NPR saved me. As soon as I, I got a job with the PRA, I knew I couldn't be around people committing crime. I represent the organisation in everything I do. It's the voice inside my head guiding me. It's my life now and it's great. Opportunities are opening up. I won an award last year and I'm going to the BBC to do journalism. Oh. So yeah, he was just done a course of journalism. Actually, we've got, yeah, a couple of people working. So one guy, I think, yeah, so he worked, he's now permanently employed at BBC One Extra after working with us. Wow. Another one's currently doing a trainee um, like apprenticeship mm -hmm. um, programme at BBC One Extra. I think because we don't just want to employ people, we want to help, help them on their them journey. To not, yeah. Um, so then the other thing, so someone um, got PRA gave me something to focus on when I came out of prison. Often you come out and don't know where to start and get back into doing the wrong things because you get overwhelmed by it all. I was able to go back to university and PRA helped me stay on track. It's good that I can work with people who already know that I've been in prison. Don't need to feel a certain way around them and I feel comfortable and confident to continue with my work. It's nice to have colleagues rather than inmates. Mm. So I think, yeah, like it is that. It's the getting out ow, and turning back to what you've known before mm -hmm. and if we can help with that providing kind of a safe space and also I think something else is the shame and the stigma it's reducing yeah. that that shame and the stigma mm -hmm. especially with like people like Zach and Jules like they they are inspiring and they are and I think they really definitely help in remove that it's seeing that that you don't need to be ashamed of it and that actually you can learn from that experience you, you can grow once you're outside yeah and I think yeah that's the, the stigma um that's a massive thing that life after prison is 
trying to break down, mm-hmm. I think, is that, oh, this is what you think prisoners are, but it that isn't the case. And it just... What do you wish that people knew about prison that they don't know? I think that's kind of what I was saying before mm-hmm. when I was saying what I, like, learn about prison was like I think I think that's what I meant it's like the the, the creativity creativity, talent that like how every it's and how just like prison everyone there's so many different types from all walks of life in prison and I think what I learned from the life after prison podcast as well is that there's so many different reasons why you could end up in that situation and a lot of the time it's from you know external life circumstances that are more difficult than a lot than other people and that can then end up in the prison system and I don't think people are always realize that it's almost quick quick, yeah quick to judge quick to blame and yeah. quick to not understand the entire surroundings that end Com- up in that situation like, it should not be the case that we have a disproportionate amount of children who are in the care system that end up in the prison completely. system like there is something wrong there exactly and it, that's exactly it it and not just not i think seeing people uh seeing them as people mm-hmm. and how as you say the circumstances that lead to being in prison mm-hmm. You don't just go. You don't just wake up one day and commit a crime. Commit yeah. a crime. There's yeah. There's always context, and I think life after prison, um, because it's so focused around Zach and Jules as well, and you get to know them. I think it's quite personal. Per, like that personal side mm. to it is massive, because as soon as you start seeing people mm. and there's context. Mm. yeah it humanizes everything humanize that's the word I was looking for no and I think that's what radio does and it brings people together and outside of prison radio helps people to feel less alone so with somewhere where already the circumstances are more difficult Mm -hmm. loneliness and isolation is a huge problem um it's almost like you know built into the design of prisons to have prisoners be in isolation in a sense so to have something that provides this connection that's national and now worldwide with other people who are also experiencing the same Mm. thing as them. I think that's amazing. So I have two questions that we end the program on. Okay. Um, The first question, it used to be, when did you feel last feel lonely? Okay. But we've changed it. Okay. So it's, when did you last feel connected? Connected. Mm. Ooh. I can think of the lonely one now. Okay, we I'm can do the lonely know. one. <laughs> the depressing one. I thought of the lonely one quite quick. No, and the connected one. Um, we can do the lonely one. Should we? Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've got a connected one. <laughs> Nothing connected springs to mind. Should I ask <laughs> again? Should I ask again? I'll ask again, and we'll do when did you last feel lonely? I'm to it's okay. One. Okay. <laughs> So we usually end on two questions. The first one is, when did you last feel lonely? Okay. Um, I think, so in London, people are always like, oh, summer in London's the best. Mm. And like, I actually, I think summer in London <laughs> is so lonely. Yeah. Um, and summer in general, to be mm. honest, like, because so if it's winter Mm -hmm. you can it's fine just being inside and watching tv or something on your own but as soon as it's nice outside you feel like you should be outside Mm. with friends or partner or something and i think so yeah obviously we've recently sort of had summer and that's that's (laughs) like 12 days (laughs) (laughs) um so and i think yeah just if you haven't like i've got to friends but it's very much like individual friends that I plan to see them weeks in advance I haven't got someone that if it's a nice day I'll just mm-hmm. be like oh it's a nice day do you want to go to the pub or go to the park or something and I 
yeah, I think when it's when it's nice weather, I I, I felt lonely loads of times this summer mm. when it's been nice weather because I want to play with someone. <laughs> oh, no, you can text me. <laughs> but um, no, I know what you mean. I wrote a song called London's Lonely and I haven't actually published it or put it anywhere. But like, I think it is yeah. a really lonely city. Like it's so big. So it gives you the impression that you should be doing exciting things all the time. And you also see people doing exciting things all the time. Like, you know, you see yeah. people in well, the park it, isn't it? sitting, you, having a glass of yeah. wine or a picnic. And you're like, I want to be sitting having a picnic. Exactly. Or like you cycle past people and you see people at a restaurant. And you're like, oh, I want to be in a restaurant. You know, I don't know. Yeah, no, completely. Um, yeah. 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 Because you think everyone else is doing that doing too. Doing that. Like probably when it's a lovely sunny day, actually most people are sitting inside. <laughs> True. <laughs> and let's be real, there aren't even that many of them. Like... <laughs> It's like 12 days this summer. <laughs> like, summer's over. Now we can all hibernate and now again we can and watch Netflix. Not feel lonely because yeah. I can sit inside. <laughs> I'll release my sad, sad song. <laughs> um, okay. And then the final question is what advice would you give to someone to help them feel more connected? Um, I think, well, the, the obvious one, I guess, is like talk, talking to people, mm-hmm. um, which. I, I'm i so bad at doing this. My sister always uh, tells me to call people, call people. Um, and I'm always like, oh, but they might be busy. Um, but people won't answer if they're busy. So. Except my mum. <laughs> <laughs> She'll like answer and have me on speakerphone in front of all her friends. And I'll be like, please, can you not do that? Like, I, or like on the train, I like tell her a whole life update and she's like, you're on speaker on the train. But anyway, yeah, no, um, you're yes. right. So that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, apart from that, yeah, so no, that's, I think, one thing. But then also like, um, like joining clubs with mm. interests like, or activities that then you meet people with like, like common interests, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I moved to Bristol um, and didn't know a soul. Um, and that's how I met people was I joined clubs and you immediately have things to talk about because you're mm-hmm. interested in the same thing. Um, yeah, true. I think that's <laughs> true. <laughs> the thing that's spring to mind. <laughs> what club did you join? Bouldering. Oh, oh my God, cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> can you do that in London? Are there lots of bouldering places? Yeah, there's one Is that like climbing? Just- Oh. Climbing like lower without ropes. Oh, wow. Chaotic. <laughs> oh, you're so sporty. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for this beautiful conversation. Thank you um, for having me. Thanks. It was lovely. It's <laughs> nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.